Over the past few videos, we forged out our bow building tools, a tomahawk and a shaving knife. And now we're ready to use those tools to rough out and send you back our Eastern Red Cedar Longbow. Eastern Red Cedar is actually a juniper and it's very common throughout the East and Midwest. Once you get into the Western states, it's supplanted by its Western cousins, the Rocky Mountain Juniper and Common Juniper and a few other species. They'll all make really good bows, but they've got to be backed with something. I'm going to back this one with sinew. Rawhide is also a great choice for bow backing and you can pick that up on my website at twistedstave.com. Eastern Red Cedar and the other junipers are very soft wood and they work very easily with hand tools. And as you'll see later on, they also dry very, very quickly. So both of these characteristics in combination make the junipers a very good choice for a survival bow as long as you have some way to back it. For this build, I'm going for more of a longbow design, but you can certainly make a shorter flat bow as well. During this series, I'm also going to be making some primitive arrows and tipping those with broadheads that I'm going to forge in the coal forge. Once we get everything done, we're going to take the whole setup hog hunting. All right, so I've went ahead and decrowned this thing, meaning that I've taken what's going to be the back and just flattened it right down. And now I've got my profile, my back profile drawn on there. This bow is going to be 63 inches long. And I'm going to build this one on a symmetrical layout, meaning that the center of the bow is going to be right in the center of the stave. Each limb is going to be um, uh, the same length. And that way, because there's no cutout shelf or anything like that, you could shoot this bow uh, either way, upside down, flip it over, however. Um, my handle is one inch wide in the middle. It holds that one inch for uh, approximately 12 inches. It flares out in the center here, maybe to one and a quarter, and then tapers down to half inch knocks. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and cut the profile out, and then we can start removing wood off the belly. And we might end up removing a little bit off the back as well. Um, I think if I just remove it off of belly, I'm going to lose all of this uh, pretty purple uh, heartwood. So I might end up thinning this sapwood out a little bit just for aesthetics.
All right, that thing's ready to go into the hot box, dry out for a little bit. Leave it in there for a little bit, let it drop some moisture. Then we'll go ahead and send you back it and be on our way. All right, so this thing's been in there in this hot box here for uh, three or four days. Um, it's been probably a week since I cut this tree I tested the moisture yesterday and I was at about 12 and a half percent and today we're at nine, ten percent, nine and a half, ten percent. So this eastern red cedar uh, starts off, starting off the moisture content is already pretty low. Uh, I didn't test this particular tree before I um, started working on the bow, but based on other trees that I've tested, the moisture content in these things is only low, mid to low 20s. And so you can see how fast the moisture content has dropped in this wood. So it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's about 10% or so. Um, we're ready to go ahead and put the sinew on this thing. Now I've got a form here that I've made where, that I'm gonna tie this thing on here and I'm gonna tie it into a reflex. Now I had some questions, I've got some other projects in this hot box. I had some questions about this uh, piece of wood right here on Instagram the other day. And I've got this one, as it was drying, I have it clamped into a reflex form, just like I will, uh, I'm about to tie this one into this one, uh, this reflex form. But on this one, I, I clamped it in there as it was drying. But the questions I had was that this bow looks like it's going to be backwards. And so what I'm going to do is put the sinew on the heartwood side of this. And so the sapwood will actually be on the belly of this bow. Now, the reason I did this is because uh, one, I just wanted to see what would happen. I've never built one like this. But number two, when I go to tiller this bow, I'm going to take wood off the belly side, which is going to be the sapwood side. And I think through that tillering process, a lot of that sapwood is going to come off. And so it's just an experiment. Uh, I had some questions, so I figured I would go ahead and address that. When I covered the sinew backing process over on the Patreon site, I got a really good question from Mike Terrelton asking why go through all of that trouble when rawhide seems so much easier. Both sinew and rawhide are great bow backings, but whereas rawhide only adds protection, sinew adds performance. So as the sinew dries, it shrinks longitudinally and it contracts. And oftentimes that will draw the bow into a reflex and kind of preload the back with tension. That translates into a higher string tension at brace and oftentimes at higher arrow speeds. If you're interested in learning more about the sinewing process, I cover this in a very detailed two-part series at patreon.com forward slash clayhaze. All right, so this is gonna be a D style bow. It's a bend through the handle bow. There's no stiff riser section. So we're gonna take sinew and put it over the entire back of this thing. And our sinew, we'll start with a piece here. Our sinew is, is pretty long, it's back sinew. Um, but it's not long enough to cover the entire bow, obviously. So we're gonna to have to stagger this thing so I'm gonna go ahead and start with a piece here in the center. Just put it down in your hide glue, make, every, make sure everything's saturated. And lay a piece right down the center. Again, just like with the Osage bow, make sure that your bundle's not twisted. It needs to be, all the fibers need to be in line so that they'll lay down in there.
Now where those things splice together, just go ahead and kind of um, lay one on there that's going to be um, right in the middle of that splice. So you're laying these things on there kind of like bricks in a brick pattern. Now for this bow, I've kind of rounded the, the edges off a little bit. And so I want to, um, so that we get a good, a nice smooth transition between the wood and the sinew and we sand all this off, I'm putting a little bit of sinew on the side, on the, just on the edge here so that it'll roll over and kind of fill in that, that spot there. And anywhere that you have any little knots or anything on the side, you want to make sure you get sinew over that. All right, so we've got all the sinew on there. Now we just need to wait for it to gel. And when it gels, it'll get kind of dry on the outside. You can touch it, it's not wet or sticky. Uh, when you get to that point, you can go ahead and wrap it with like an ace bandage or something like that. You don't have to wrap it, but if you do, you're gonna end up with a much smoother finish on your, your sinew. If you don't wrap it, when this stuff dries, it'll open up a bunch of little fissures on here and then you gotta figure out how to deal with that. Now we just need to put this bow in a warm, dry place and wait for the sinew to completely dry. I'm going to put this bow in a hot box to speed up that process. After about a week in the box, the sinew is completely dry and we're ready to finish off the tillering on this bow. Since we already had the limbs bending nicely before we put the sinew on, there's really not that much left to do, and we'll have a string on this thing in no time. But before I try to string it, I just want to reduce the weight a little bit. It's still pretty heavy. Because the limb tips on this bow are so fine, and cedar is a very soft wood anyway, I didn't want to cut string grooves in it. For knocks, I simply wrapped sinew around the tips to give the string a place to sit. You'll notice that when I'm tillering this bow, I'm not putting the tips on the ground like I normally would with an Osage bow. The reason being, again, is because these tips are very, very fine, and cedar is a very soft wood. So when you are tilling these bows, Put it either on your instep or put it on a tillering rack with a string, but do not put those tips on the ground because you will break them off.
like it. Now that we've got the bow built, we need to build some primitive arrows to go with it. In the next video, we're going to be making river cane arrows and hand forged trade point arrowheads to tip them with. After that, it's pig hunting time. If you don't want to miss out on those videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it so you get notified. I want to give a big thanks to all my patrons. Without you guys, none of these videos would be possible. If you are signed up for Patreon, don't forget to join the Facebook group. There's some great discussions going on over there. So with that, we'll see you next time.